Hello, and welcome back to Youth Code Jam's Online Bits and Bytes lessons. Today we're heading back to Scratch to do a version of an activity my coworker Max made. Um, it's called Pollen Race, so we're going to be doing something with bees in Scratch today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so let's go ahead and start. Reminder, as usual, new lessons are uploaded Mondays and Wednesdays at 8 a.m. And then we'll hold the live sessions to go over the activity, any problems, or just to work through it, um, or to explore the code a little bit more to see what would happen if we did something else. Um, these are open to all students. They're free. You just have to go to um, our website and register for those, and I'll show you where to do that in a, just a minute. Um, so today, if you want to go ahead and get it pulled up, we're going to go to this link. It's going to be on the website, um, but obviously because I have to record these before the website's updated, it's not there right now. Um, so you can go ahead and type in this URL um, or just wait a second and we'll get there together or click on the link from the web page, uh, our website when we get there. Um, but it will just be scratch.mit.edu backslash projects backslash 3966710061 backslash editor. If you hit enter, um, you should be there. But before I pull it up on mine, I'm gonna go, so here's our website, youthcodejam.org, and then under the Jam at Home tab, you're gonna go to Bits and Bytes Online. So to access that link, you're just gonna have to scroll down here, and instead of the activity sheets, I'll have that link available here for you guys. Um, today we won't have activity sheets. This is a challenge activity of, of sorts, um, so you'll have to follow along with the video. But the the link to the starter file will be here when we come when you come on Wednesday morning or any time after Wednesday. Um, and then to register for the live session, you will just click this green button and follow it to our active page. And you can see, because I'm recording this on Monday, we have Tuesdays available and then Thursdays is here. Now, if you've worked on other activities and you didn't get to come to that live session, you're welcome to bring the, those activities up and any questions you have in these live sessions. Um, we don't have to stick with just this topic. Um, and also, if you have other projects you're working on in your spare time, you're welcome to um, show us those and ask questions if you've run into a problem and you just need an outsider's um, opinion or someone else to look at it. That's often very helpful with code. So you can just go ahead. That's free to sign up for. You get one link. You get the access link and password. Um, I believe those are emailed out the morning of the event. And that's it. So without any more, nothing else to do, let's go ahead and go to our Scratch page. So like I said, you're gonna click on this link from the web page, or you can pause the video and go ahead and type it into your browser. And it's gonna take you to this remix of um, one of my coworkers, Max. If you've been to any of our live events or in-person events or jams, you have probably met Max. He built this, um, and it actually has a different purpose, but today we're going to um, build the base code from scratch. And then maybe another time we'll try to do some of the higher level challenge activities. Um, that might be something I pull out for the live session on Thursday, May 21st. I don't think. So as you can see, um, we already have some stuff in place because it is a starter file. We have the pollen counter and a honey counter. So we're going to collect pollen and then deposit it into or drop it off in our honeycomb, which will create honey. And if you come down to the right in our sprites panel, you'll see we have the hive, the flower, a bee, and then the pollen, which you can see right now is currently on the bee's feet. All right, so we're going to, we have quite a bit of code to get through today. So hopefully that will be, um, this will be a little bit more challenging than other things we've done. I'm guessing maybe the costume changing level challenge is what this is gonna be today, but it'll be fun. So we're not gonna do anything with the hive or this honeycomb here that's going to stay stationary for this activity. If later you want to go back and make it move or add code to it, you're welcome to. 
Um, but to get started, I think we're going to go ahead and start with the flower. So we're going to do the beginning code for the flower. So let's click on the flower. Um, to make sure that you're adding code to the right icon, make sure that it's highlighted with this blue outline. The word is white on a blue background and you see the trash can here. That is our, those are all signs that it's active. Another thing you can look for is that the sprite name is flower here. So you'll see that will change when you click on the different ones, but we're gonna work with the flower. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it to use a certain costume and to start in a certain place because this flower is gonna move around our screen and the bee, you are going to use the bee to chase after it. Uh, okay, so we're going to use our, um, in the event drawer, which is the fourth one down, kind of a yellow gold color. We're gonna grab our when green flag clicked block and drag it into our workspace here. This white space is our workspace. And then we're going to go to our look store, which is purple, and grab the switch costume two. And our my instructions have us going to costume one. So let's pause a second. And if we go to the costumes tab over here at the left, you can see that there's a lot of costumes in here. There's a yellow middle, kind of a cyan, bright blue, maybe an aqua, that could be called a lot, a light purple, a light orange, and then a very bright green there. So we're gonna have it start with the first costume, which is going to have the bright pink middle. So I'm gonna switch back to the code tab. We're not gonna do anything with that right now. And then in our motion drawer, which is the blue one, we're going to use the go to X, Y block and put in some coordinates or some, uh, some numbers about where to go. So in X, we want the flower to start at 180. And for Y, we want it to start at 81. So when we start the program, now if I come over here and click the green button, the flower is gonna start over here in the corner, which is right where we want it to go. Okay, so that's our starter code for the flower. We're gonna come back and do something more with them later, but for now we're just getting this set up on the flower. Um, and in the, so we have the costume, we have the motion. We're pretty familiar with that. So now we're gonna move on to, we're gonna do the small code first because the bulk of our code is gonna be for the B. So we're gonna do the pollen next. So I've clicked on the pollen. And again, we're going to have, we're going to, our major event here, what kicks everything off in the program is going to be the when green flag click block. So if you've used Scratch before, you're familiar with that these events is what, um, these are what are used to really start your program so that it will run either without you pressing something or with you just in interacting once with it. It depends on how you set up your code. So this is really the trigger to execute your code. So when we hit this green flag, it's going to run whatever needs to run that's attached to this block of code. Um, so when we first start the program, we don't want the pollen visible. So we're gonna go to the look store and grab the hide block. So you just scroll down a little bit and you have hide here. And then we're gonna do some stuff. So for this one, we're not going to show it yet, but we are going to make sure that it's ready to be, um, that it's gonna be in the right spot when we do show it. So we're gonna to go to the control drawer, which is right under events, and grab the forever block. So anything that goes in here is going to repeat until the program ends, um, which means in this case, until we hit the red, the red stop sign button or until one of our variables gets to a certain point. So that's another way we could stop the program. It just depends on how we want to set it up. So inside our forever block, we're going to get the front layer block from the look store. So go to the look store and then you have to scroll pretty much to the bottom. You're going to go grab this go to front layer and drag it inside. So this will make sure that no matter what the pollen is on the top of the screen. So you can think of this kind of like a sandwich. The background is the bottom of the sandwich and then everything stacked on top. So this would be on top of the background. So this would be, if the background is zero, this would be one, two, three, 
or I guess a building might be better. So, so the background's ground zero, the hive is ground one, the flower is ground two, the bee is ground three, and the pollen is ground four. So the pollen is already set to be at the top because it was the last thing we added to our sprites panel. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it'll work out that way once we start adding code. So you're gonna go ahead and use the go to front layer block to ensure, to make sure that it stays at the top layer no matter what. And I accidentally ran the code. All right, and before we move on, we're going to grab the motion drawer and we're gonna look for a block that says go to, and it's right here, it defaults to go to random position. And we're gonna attach it right up there. So right underneath our, our go to front layer block. And we're gonna tell the pollen that we want it to go to the B. So the reason we're having it go to the bee is because we want the pollen to show up on the bee's feet, like what you saw at the beginning. Um, so that's how it will do that when we start working with our code. So we're gonna have some more code for our pollen in a little bit, um, but right now we have to get started with the bee who has the bulk of our code for today. So let's go ahead and click on the bee, make sure that it's active. And we're gonna start off with some of our smaller blocks. So we're gonna need, go ahead and let's just pull out three of the wind green flag clicked blo blocks. We'll just go ahead and get this started because we're gonna need these. We might need another one. Yes, go ahead and grab four. We're gonna need four of these and just leave them aside for now. All right, so our first one, it's gonna be really short. We're gonna go grab our forever block from the control drawer. Um, and then go to the looks drawer and grab the next costume block. Um, so let's look at our picture. So you can see that our bee is hovering in midair. So we're gonna make sure that it actually looks like our bee is flying as it chases the magically hovering flower. So if I hit the green flag now, you can see that the, we're switching between the costumes. So it looks like the, the bee is going, is flying. Um, and right now that's all the bee do, does, but we're gonna add some code to it so it will actually move around and rotate and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, but we're gonna finish our actual like setup code first. So what setup code is, is making sure that when you first start your program, everything is set to zero, it's positioned where it needs to be and it's ready to go. Um, so we're doing that before we add in our actions and our counting for our variables and everything. So with our second block, we're going to go to the variable drawer, which is the second from the bottom. Um, and you can see that Max was super nice and already created the variables for us. So we have honey and pollen. And so we're gonna grab this set block and attach it underneath a empty one green flag click block. So you can see um, it automatically sets honey to zero. So we just wanna use the dropdown to change one of these to pollen. So honey and pollen are both going to start at zero now when we click the green flag. You can see it was left on one and four from when I remixed the project. So now if I hit the green flag, they're both at zero. And then we're also gonna make sure that our variables that, oh, we're also gonna make sure that the B stays at the front layer because we don't want it getting hidden behind the um, flower when we're flying around. So go back to our look shore and scroll down to get that go to front layer and attach it right underneath one of your set blocks. So you should have the two orange set blocks. So honey and pollen are set to zero and now you have the go to front layer block. And then we're gonna go do some stuff in the motion drawer to make sure that our bee moves correctly when we can start adding movement to it. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is give it a starting position. So just like we did with the flower, we're gonna use the go to X, go to Y block right here. And X is going to start at zero and Y is going to start at zero. So let's go ahead and run the green flag. So you can see zero, zero is the center of our screen. Right, and then, so we're obviously gonna make the uh, bee fly around with some controls. So that means that when we go left and right, we want it to turn correctly. So we're gonna go to our motion drawer and we're gonna grab the set rotation block, which is down here, set rotation. We're gonna leave it at left to right. 
And then we're going to use the point and direction block right up here in the motion drawer and leave that set to 90. So that means that it will go from left to right, but it will stay at the same um, angle. So it won't flip without this. Um, if we tried to move it, it would actually flip upside down when it went to go to the, right now it's facing left. So if it went to go to the right and we wanted to make it face right, it would go upside down so that the wings would be down here. With the point and direction 90 block, that keeps that from happening. It keeps it so that the wings are where they should be on the bee. Okay, so the first two blocks are done. I'm just gonna move this one under here for now um, so that I have enough working space because these next two blocks are gonna be wider and taller. So I need my third one green flag click block at the top. So get one of the two left that are empty. And I'm gonna grab a forever loop. So if you remember, the forever loop runs until we somehow exit the program. So for this one, this is where we're gonna add our motions and we're gonna be using the arrows on our keyboard to do that. You're gonna be, well, you can change these to any key you want on your keyboard, but we will be using the up, down, right, and left arrows. So in our forever block, we're going to need four if statements. So under forever, you'll, you're gonna see this if then, Let's grab four of those and we're gonna stack them inside. So you see my first one, I nested inside that forever loop. And now I'm going to grab another one and I'm gonna put it right under, not inside that if statement, but underneath it. So they should be nested in the forever loop, but four if statements stacked on top of each other. So what an if statement does is it kind of allows you to, much like the forever loop, which lets us do something repeatedly, um, without and still uh, process through the program from step to step. So that one interrupts that step by step by redoing something over and over. The if statement lets us branch off in kind of different directions. So if a certain condition is met, then we'll do, I don't know. So in this case, if we're holding up the up arrow, then we're going to move up. If we're holding down the down arrow, we're going to move down. If we're not holding any of those keys, our bee is just gonna stay still and the wings are gonna fly, but it's not going to move around the screen. So we're gonna go to our sensing drawer so that we can tell which key it's being, I think it's sensing. I think it's sensing. Let's see, ah, yeah. So we're gonna use four of these inside these um, diamonds to see which key is being pressed. So we're gonna go ahead and grab those and just fill those in right now. So grab the key space press block, and then you're gonna drag it carefully over here. And you see how I'm hovering just at the edge of that um, diamond hole, and it's highlighted white. When it's highlighted white, it's safe to release your block and it will just snap right in there. If it doesn't highlight white, then it's not safe to, then it's not gonna snap in there. Um, and you might actually kind of get st it stuck behind the code. So just kind of move it around till you find that spot. And I'll show you again, because we're gonna fill in all of these with the same key. We're gonna come over here and you see right there, I'm just coming from the right and hovering over the diamond. And I can come from any direction really up down. It just has to slightly hover over that space. And I'll get this last one. Okay, so if you need to, you might, and you might, because this is tricky for um, a lot of students to get done, especially students who aren't used to working with the uh, laptops or desktop. So if you need a second, go ahead and pause the video, and when you're ready to move on, restart the video. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead, and our next step is gonna be assigning these to the keys that they want, because we're not gonna use the space bar. So I'm gonna start with the up arrow, and you'll see they're right here at the top. So we're gonna do up arrow, down arrow, right arrow, and left arrow. So like I said before, you could do any of these keys that you want, you just have to know what direction you wanna use them for. Um, but I'm gonna use up the arrow keys because it's, be, it's gonna be the most clear when we start adding in the movement. So for, if we're changing, if we're gonna go up, we're gonna uh, use the up arrow to go up. But what I meant to say is we're gonna need to change our Y value. 
So we've used a lot of coordinates in this, right? Our B starts at zero, zero, so X is at zero, zero. And our flowers over here at, where do we have them? 180 and 81. So it went 180 to the right and 81 up. What exactly points, inches, I don't know, not inches, probably points or pixels or something like that, something really small. Um, so that's what's happening there. So if you've done this with your math classes, you might be familiar with the X, Y uh, coordinate grid, and you've plotted some points and maybe drawn some lines. So that's what we're using today to move our sprites around and position them and everything. So what we're gonna use on the B is we're going to change our Y value, wherever the B is, by 10. So we don't need to know where the B is in the game. We just need to tell it, hey, I want you to go up and you're gonna change by 10. So in our motion drawer, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna grab, let's go ahead and grab two of these change Y by 10 blocks. You're gonna put one in, in the up arrow if statement and then you're gonna put the other in the down arrow if statement. And for the down arrow, we're actually going to add a negative sign in front of that the negative tells it to go down. So in the coordinates, um, like I was saying with the flower, our B starts at zero, zero, um, but our flower is over here at 180, 81. So it went 180, whatever, to the right, which is positive, and then 81 up, which is positive. But if I had said negative 81, it would have dropped down here somewhere. And if I had said negative 180, it would be over here on our screen. So negative for down and left and positive numbers for up and right. Okay, so we have our up and down. And now we're gonna go to our motion drawer and get um, our X value. So we're gonna change it by X, X by 10, positive 10 to go right, and then change X by negative 10 to go left. Um, but like I was saying earlier, sometimes when we go left and right and we're turning around, things don't work out with the B. The B ends up flipped. So we're going to add um, a couple new, we're going to add a couple blocks of code real quick to make sure that it's turning the same way. So earlier when we did the code over here, this is just to make sure it's facing the right way when we start. This code in here will make sure it's facing the right way when we're changing things around. So we're going to get that point and direction block. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I think we're back now. Yes, I see the little recording button. I apologize. I had a chickle in my throat and I needed to pause the recording um, so that you didn't have to listen to me cough. Um, so like I was saying, we need to make sure the B stays in the right position when we're turning from right to left. So we're gonna add the um, point and direction block to um, both our right and left if statements. I'm gonna put it right above our change X blocks. And then in the left arrow, the only thing I'm going to do is change it from a positive 90 to a negative 90. You can type that either by um, typing in the negative sign, which I forgot to mention earlier, that key is at the top row of your keyboard right next to the zero. It has the two little lines on it. That's how you get the negative sign. Or you can use their drop down tool here and just drag it, the arrow over to the opposite side of the circle. So we started over here at 90. This is negative 90. If you had gone this way, it'd be 180, whatever. Um, but just make sure it says negative 90 and click out of the space and we're good to go. So next we're gonna move on to our block of code that lets us um, interact with the other sprites and changes how they act and behave and changes our variable counts. So we're gonna go to the control drawer and we're gonna use a forever block. And this is because our game is going to go on until we manually stop it using the red um, button over here next to the green flag. So we're, that's why we're using all these forever blocks. You, you can play this game nonstop. And then we're gonna use an if statement. This time, we need two, so we're gonna put one, and then we're gonna come down here and do two. So they're nested inside the forever loop, but the if statements are stacked on top of each other. And then we're gonna go back to our sensing drawer, 
And what we want to look for is, oh, I'm getting ahead. We need to go to our operator's drawer. So in this block over here, we had one condition we were checking, and that was to see which key was being pressed on the keyboard. This time we're going to have two conditions in our if statement. So we need our um, com combination operator. So we're going to look at the and. We want the and operator. So what the and operator says is, if whatever in here and whatever in here are true, then we're gonna execute whatever in this if statement. Otherwise, it's gonna jump down to this if statement and see if it can do anything with that. So for this one, we're gonna need two from the sensing drawer. So we wanna start with um, touching color, and you see it defaults to green. That's okay, we're gonna change it. So I want you to go ahead and click on that green circle and you'll see how we get this color uh, slider menu up here. So what you could do is you could figure out what hex value or what combination gets you this exact color, or you can come down here and click the eyedropper. And you see how it highlights just our screen, and now I can click on any color I want. So that still made it green, I'm gonna click it again. Um, we want to click the pink of the flower. So we're going to do something when the bee is touching the pink of the flower. And then to get rid of that, we're just going to click into the white space here. And then we're going to see, so we are going to use the space key. We're going to get key, space key pressed and drop it on the other side. Okay. So now we're going to build the code. We're going to tell it what to do if the bee is touching the pink spot of the flower and we hit the space key. So we want, the first thing we want to do is we want our pollen count to go up. So we're going to grab this change, mine says change honey by one. Go ahead and grab it if it says change honey. And then we're just going to use the drop down to change it to pollen. So this will count up our pollen count. It will add up our pollen count, sorry, um, by one each time that we touch the pink and press the space key. That is only going to go up if we're touching the pink and pressing the space key. And then the next thing we're going to do is send a message. So how do we do that? That's gonna go under the events drawer. And we're going to grab this block that says broadcast message, um, broadcast message one. We're gonna put it right underneath our change pollen by one block. So we don't wanna leave it as message one. That's just a default value. We're gonna use the drop down and do new message. And then we're gonna type in the words holding pollen. So we're sending this message to our, I believe it's going to be our pollen. Uh, yes, it's going to be our pollen sprite and something's going to happen when we send that message. We're going to press OK and that's all we're going to do with that for now. Um, and then we're going to come down. So you see right underneath the events drawer is the control drawer. We want to wait just one second. So we're going to grab this wait one second block before we send the second message to so go back and grab a broadcast block. And once again, we're gonna make a, a new one. So use the drop down, just hit that little triangle, use the drop down, go to new message, and we're gonna send um, flower, we're gonna send a message to the flower that's called flower change. That's gonna tell it to change positions. And whoops, I clicked out, so it didn't take. So I accidentally clicked the blue space, so it didn't save my message. Okay, flower change, all right. So we have that part of our code done, that if statement is good. So now we're gonna go to our second if statement. And this is gonna be how we deposit the pollen or drop off the pollen in the hive. So we're going to go back to our operators drawer and we want to get another and operator because this is going to be, again, we're gonna to have to do some, two things are gonna to have to be true for, the, for us to drop off the pollen. So go back to the sensing drawer and the first one we want is the touching block. So you see this top one, it says touching mouse pointer. Go ahead and grab that one and drag and drop it into our first block here. And we're gonna change our first diamond. We're gonna change the mouse pointer to hive. So when we're touching the hive and we're gonna grab our key pressed again and we're gonna leave it at space because these, um, it's okay to leave both of these as the space bar because A, it's easier to work with when you're playing a game, right? Because the space bar is so big and it's right there in the middle. Um, but also because 
it's not going to affect the other if statement if this part isn't true. So if I hit the space key and I'm not touching that color, it's not going to mess up the program. Um, so remember, the, this code will only execute if both these things are true. And then this time we're going to change to we're going to change both variables. So grab the honey. Um, whoops, sorry, I went to the wrong orange. There are the variables drawer, and grab the one that says change honey by one again. And this time we're going to change honey by pollen. So instead of having a set number, we're going to go back to the variable drawer and grab this little bubble that says pollen and drop it in there. So what that's going to do is however many pollen we've collected, it's going to um, increase the honey by that amount. So if we collected four pollens, then it will um, the honey will go from zero to four. And because we've dropped off the pollen, now we're going to um, reset pollen to zero. So we're going to do a little bit of complicated math, but you can do it because I'm going to walk you through it. Um, so go back and get another change honey by one block. Make sure this second one is change pollen. And then we're going to go to our operators drawer again. And we're going to grab um, this multiplication. So this might look different. In school, you might use an x for a multiplication if you're there in your math classes. Um, a lot of times as you get older, you're going to see like a little star or an asterisk um, to indicate that, or sometimes just a dot. So for programming, this is our multiplication sign. It's a little asterisk or a little star um, that appears above the number eight on your keyboard. So we're gonna grab that and drop it in the one bubble. And you can go ahead and type negative one on that side. And then we're gonna go back to the variable store and grab the pollen bubble again. Whoops, and remember earlier, I was saying you could pop things out. I just did that because it wasn't lined up. I'm going to drop it there first and then drop it in there. Okay, so what's happening here might look a little weird. Um, so what's, sorry. So what we're doing here is we're changing pollen by the current number of pollen times negative one. So what that's essentially going to do is instead of adding a number, we're subtracting. So if we had four pollen and we dropped four pollen off in the honey, we're now going to change four by negative four, and that's going to give us zero. Now, some of you might be able to think of another way to do that. You could reset this to zero. Um, you, um, that's one way you could do it. It's all up to you, really, if you want to play around with that code. This is how um, Max did it in his, so this is how I'm showing you how to do it. And then we're going to make a third message, because we need to do one more thing. So I'm going to go back to events and grab the broadcast message block one more time. And then we're going to make a new message and it says dropped pollen. All right, and then we're going to use, we are gonna use the wait one second block, okay? So that's our code for there. I'm not gonna run it just yet, it's, it's good. Um, let's go back to our flower and add that last bit of code for the flower. So when, we, when the flower receives its message, flower change, the flower is going to change to a different spot on the screen. So we want to go to our event store and get the when I receive, it says dropped pollen on mine. Um, so grab that block and then change it to flower change. And we're going to use, we're just going to use this simple go to XY block. Let's see, go to, there we go, go to XY. Um, but we aren't going to tell it where to go every time. We're going to tell it to pick a random spot for both X and Y. So you're going to go to the operator shore, and we're going to grab this pick random 1 to 10 block, but we're going to change the values. So what this does is any values we put in there, it's going to randomly select um, an X value and a Y value to send the flower to. Um, so for X, we're actually going to start at 180 and go to negative 180. So what that's doing is 180 is over here on the right, where it is right now, and negative 180 is over here on the left. So we're telling it to pick a random spot anywhere from the left to right. And then we're going to do a little bit shorter of a space for y. We're going to have it go from 120 to um, negative 120. So that means is, so 120 is probably about here somewhere at the top of our screen because it is a rectangle, so it's longer than it is tall. 
Um, so 120 would be up here at the top and negative 120 would be here at the bottom and it will randomly pick a number anywhere in there, okay? So almost done, we just have very short code to add to the pollen. So click on the pollen um, and the pollen has two messages, right? It has, if it was um, holding pollen or if it dropped the pollen. So we're gonna go to our event drawer and we're gonna grab the um, when I receive block. We're gonna grab two of those. I don't know why it wants to use my microphone. It doesn't need to. Oh, I grabbed when loudness. That's why I wanted to use my microphone. Sorry, uh, when I receive, we should have two of the when I receive blocks. You're gonna change one to holding pollen and mine's defaulting to dropped pollen, so I'm good. But if yours isn't, um, if yours isn't, go ahead and change it. And then just go to the look drawer. And so when you receive the, we wanna show the pollen when we get the, when we're actually holding it. So we're going to drag that there and then we're going to hide it again when we drop it off. And that's all of our code. So let's go ahead and run the flag and we see it's flying. So you can see I'm, now that my bee is touching the pink, I'm going to hit the space bar and you can see the pollen has appeared and the bee is moving how we want it to move. Um, so if this game is moving slower, you could speed up those weight is moving slow for you. You could speed up those wait times. Um, you could change other things in the program. So let's see, I have five. Let's see if our math works. When uh, I'm touching the hive, so I'm gonna hit the space key here. You see our pollen went from five here to five here and back to zero. So that's how that code works. Um, you should play a game with your siblings if you have um, younger siblings at home or even older siblings. You guys could race to see who can collect the most honey the fastest. We did that at Bibliotech. We gave everyone about a minute and some people were really fast at it. Some of us were not as fast, um, but that was really fun. And there's also a lot of stuff that now that you have the basics of this code, um, there's other things you can do with it. You could have different conditions for if you wanna change the costume of the flower like you could change how much, so right now we have, um, when you collect pollen, it changes by one. You could also have the flower changed to a different colored center and then change how much it goes up or down even when it, you select that color. Um, so there's lots of ways to expand on this game. We can try some at our live session if you guys wanna sign up and come to that. Remember, just go to our website. Ooh, I'm already in the website. Remember, just go to our website and look for the register, register for the live session block and it's gonna take you here and you can just sign up. Um, but thank you for your patience today with my little hiccup and um, I hope to see you guys at our live session. Have a good day.